So what's the best drug for brooding? Mm, I like this question so much. I like it so much. And I'm going to address it in a way that will help everyone. Okay. When we talk about drug, one of my professors in school then would say, whenever you use a drug for your chicken, it's more like you're covering for your sin. You're covering up for your sin. And I so much like the way you put it. Because if everything is perfect, if everything were to be perfect, not only on your side, though, at the, from the archery, from the parent stock, everything, if the parent stock were clean, no disease in them, no disease passed into the eggs, which now comes with the chicken, like I always talk about, mycoplasma that causes CRD, which is a major problem of broilers. That is how, mostly that is how it happens. It comes from the hatchery into the head and into the cheeks. And inside the cheeks, it's just waiting for a favorable time, maybe when the birds are stressed, like humans. You know, sometimes when you sweep and you inhale dust, you have flu, you have cata. So it's not as if it's just that dust that causes the cata. It's more like it's, it, it stimulates uh, the kata to come. It's like an allergy, yeah. So the same with mycoplasma that comes from the heart rate. But my focus is, if everything were to be perfect from the parent stock, the archery, then coming to your farm, then your biosecurity on your farm, you may not even use drugs at all throughout your brooding, or maybe just once or twice. But now we need to use drugs as much as possible. Sometimes some people even use antibiotics. This last session is not basically organic poultry. It's both organic and the conventional way. So when I talk about drugs, you know, I'm talking about synthetic drugs. And when I want to talk about organic poultry, I will mention it. I'll be specific. I'll say organic poultry. Excuse me. So whenever you use drugs, it's like you're covering up for your sins. But in brooding, what I would advise is we have levels of antibiotics. We have strengths of antibiotics and we have different types. You know, we have, um, you, may, you may be using um, penicillin as an antibiotic. You may be using uh, cipro, ciprofloxacin as an antibiotic. You may be using, um, what do they call it? Gentamicin as an antibiotic. You know, all those. And we have broad spectrum. We have the ones that at attack certain things. That is why the knowledge of a vet is important. Those who know what these antibiotics actually attack and how effective it can be. So back to the question, you don't, you don't start using strong or the strongest antibiotics when you are brooding. That's very important. You don't start using the strongest antibiotics that you can lay your hands on just because you know this person say ah it's so powerful once you use this it's going to work of course it's going to work if you use it when you are brooding and sometimes it can even kill your best if you are not careful with the dosage so it's going to work but then one thing most people don't know is that antibiotics is more like a problem to poultry or even humans generally because the bacteria in your birds if you use these antibiotics this time, they have no need. They have identified it. They may be trying to build resistance over time. So before long, the kind of bacteria that is causing that particular disease and you are using the strongest antibiotics you can find to kill, after a while, that strongest antibiotics will not be able to handle them. Now, if you, if you go from strongest, where are you going again? That means you are coming down. You have used your best. You have thrown your best shots. So... I don't advise that you use the strongest antibiotics for brooding because you're just starting. The bears are still gentle. They are still fragile. And, you know, as much as possible, you try to keep your brooding area clean, as clean as possible. So you believe that any jams that will enter that place should not be a, a Goliath kind of jams. So you should also try to handle it step by step. If you are going to use antibiotics at all, try to go step by step. Start from the, the least... Not necessarily the least, but not the best or not the strongest that you can lay your hands on. For me, even though there are, there are articles, there are studies that claim that um, aerofloxacin has some issues with, I think, lameness. Yeah, there are some studies that claim that 
it can cause lameness in your broilers. But I tell you, I don't really think I've experienced personally lameness in broilers as a result of anti uh, of that antibiotics enrofloxacin. Generally, I encourage people to use enrofloxacin. It's okay if you're using, uh, if you're raising your birds the conventional way you can use enrofloxacin, it's good to start with. And sometimes you need to also consult your vet. There are some arteries that because of certain things that are going on there, maybe in the in the last six months, maybe people have noticed that you no, know, some people take their cheeks to the lab to test. So maybe people have noticed that there's this particular organism that comes with these particular birds. That is why sometimes vets will say, ah, ammo birds, these are the this is the antibiotics for them. This is the right antibiotics for them. They will say, uh, Olam birds, this is the right antibiotics for them. That is the knowledge behind it. They have studied the farm, the hatchery. They have seen that fish that come from there have this particular bacteria, have this particular fungi, whatever. And because of that history, they are able to recommend that you should use so, 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 and so uh, antibiotics. And once you use it, it takes care of it. They may just choose a specific antibiotics that is not necessarily brush spectrum that will just undo that part uh, that particular bacteria so you also have to put your head is it head now put your hair on the ground if it is a leg so put your hair on on the ground to know what's going on uh in the hatchery that you have you have chosen to take your birds from question. okay what's your question again so many questions here sorry is it advisable to combine antibiotics and multivitamin when breeding yeah, preferably all things being equal, if your birds are okay, not emaciated, I will explain why what, what the meaning of emaciated is in birds at least. If your birds are okay, it's better to just serve the antibiotics first and follow it up with uh, multivitamins. But if they are emaciated, maybe they are they are not even eating, they are they are they, are, they have lost weight and all those things, you may want to help them with the um, multivitamin. There are, the reason is that there are some antibiotics, even in humans, there are some antibiotics that you don't use multivitamins or blood tonic in humans now. You don't use blood tonic when you're using some antibiotics. They will advise you, if your um, pharmacist will tell you, don't use antibiotics, uh, don't use multivitamins, don't use blood tonic while you're using this drug. So the same for birds. There are some, it's not all. There are some. So because you will not know all of them, you will not know the one that you, that will permit you to take multivitamin. That's why the, we advise generally you don't use multivitamin when you're using antibiotics. But if the birds, you know, the health and the life of the bird is what matters the most. If the bird is dying, it doesn't have strength to even hit, it doesn't have anything, you need multivitamin to. So it may just lower the level at which that antibiotics will work. But at least you still need your birds to survive. So if the birds are okay, you just, they just came down with the disease, but bodily, they are still okay. They can pull through three days of antibiotics to be followed up by multivitamins. Then you should just use the um, antibiotics first and follow up with multivitamins. <laughs>